you for this night. We thank you for your day of rest. We thank you for your presence and your fellowship. And we ask that you would have your way tonight. You would move in all of our hearts. We are your people. We're the sheep of your pasture, your flock. And we just ask that you would feed us. We love you so much. We ask you for your presence to be here and, and that you administer to our hearts the needs that we have, everybody that's here, that we could also be the body and, and minister to one another, and that also, but more importantly than anything, Father, that we would minister to you and that we would bless you. Father, I ask that you would just um, put your blessing on this, this uh, little Bible study here tonight that you would anoint it and, and that you would give me the ability to speak what you want me to speak and articulate how you want me to articulate, Father. In the name of Jesus, in the name of Yeshua, we pray, amen. Amen. All right, so I'm kind of feeling kind of laid back so far tonight, so that's good, though. I like to feel relaxed. And this is really a basic... Thing that we're trying to do here but you know what I've learned is that no matter how long you've been walking in the Lord we start to forget the most important things sometimes and then our walk starts not working very well and we start running into snags and stuff and things just aren't going well it's kind of like your vehicle you know you have hello you have, you know, you, you don't do maintenance on it, and all of a sudden it doesn't matter that you had fresh oil in it, you know, 3,000 miles ago. Now it's not fresh anymore. So I, I just found that the, I, I always need to be encouraged and reminded of the basics. So that's kind of what we're doing here is the basics. And I'm just going to start in Psalm chapter 1. If you all have your Bibles. And I don't mind, like, us interacting that's just fine with me this doesn't need to be uh you know, i know some of you guys got amazing knowledge and stuff and we can just share with each other so i love this psalm I always have and this has kind of been really a thing for my life psalm one has been a very important chapter in my life as a born again believer i was born again when i was 16 years old I'm 47 now, so that's 31 years, and I've tried to walk this walk with the Word. The Word's been so important in my life. And so it says, Blessed is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly, nor stand in the way of sinners, nor sit in the seat of the scornful, but his delight is in the law of the Lord, and in his law he does meditate day and night. He shall be like a tree planted by the rivers of water that brings forth his fruit in his season. His leaf also shall not wither, and whatsoever he does shall prosper. That sounds pretty good, doesn't it? The ungodly are not so, but are like the chaff which the wind drives away. Therefore the ungodly shall not stand in the judgment, nor sinners in the congregation of the righteous. For Yahuwah, the Lord, knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the ungodly shall perish. So I just want to look at, you know, that word blessed is honored. You know, God, it's actually the word Baruch, which has to do with him bowing the knee. It really amazes me that I don't even understand it, honestly, how the creator of the universe says he blesses us, which means to bow the knee. It's, a, it's an honor thing. Right? Isn't that amazing that the, you know, it almost is like, you know, like, like Peter, he's like, no, you, you don't wash my feet, Lord. Like, I'm not worthy that you wash my feet. But he's like, I want to bless you. Well, if you want the blessing of God, this is going to tell you how to be the, have the blessing of God in your life. Blessed is the man, happy, laden down with gifts, is the man that does not walk in the counsel of the ungodly. So first of all, you separate yourself from the things of, that are going to bring you down. I know like we got a lot of people that have been around the block here for a long time, so that's good. Hey, Tamara. Hey. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And that word law, that's the word Torah. And you know some of you guys know this, but it's really neat because it's a blend of two Hebrew words. It's the blend of the word yara, 
which means to cast or to throw, and then or, Torah, you see the yara and the or, and it means the light of God cast forth, or the instruction. Remember the word says, your, light, your word is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. And so he has given, a, he's not left us in darkness. And so without the word of God, we're really in darkness. God's given us instruction so that we can be blessed, so that we can stand, right? But look at this man who is blessed. You want to be the blessed man? In his light cast forth, in his instructions, he meditates day and night. I want to tell you something that if, I, if somebody had told me what life was going to look like for the next 30 some years of my life as I started making this journey with Yeshua and they told me what I was going to go through, I would have never signed up. I would have said, I can't handle it. There's no way I'm going to make it through. But as a born-again believer, as a young man at 16 years old, I developed an absolute love for the Word. I was voracious in my appetite. I love the Word of God. And I wouldn't be here stand so many times. I felt like I couldn't make it. There's been times I felt like temptation was going to overwhelm me. And the Word would speak into my heart that I hid there. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? by taking heed according to your word. So I just want to say that the word of God has kept me. The word of God has protected me. It has spoken to me in my darkest hours. If I didn't put it there, it wouldn't be there for me to draw off, but it's been resources. And he says that you will be like a tree planted by the rivers of water. You know, when a drought comes, the drought can come and all the trees around might be dying. Because they have no water, but that tree that's planted by the river that never runs dry, it's not even worried, right? Right. When, it's run deep. You know, I, you, you can have times of dryness and, and different things in your life, or maybe you're, going, you're like, I don't even have a, a church or a fellowship. I know where to go. I don't seem to have a good place of worship. There's no feeding there. But you learn how to plant yourself by the rivers of living water. And when everybody else is dry, you're living in revival. You know, people can say, there's no revival happening. You're like, I'm living revival, right? Because I'm alive. I'm revived. And so I'm, I'm a little bit preachy, so you guys bear with me. I, I kind of go in and out of preach and teach. But I just, I love the word. And I know, I'm so thankful that he put it in me. So he meditates day and night. And, you know, there's a couple of like practical things I want to talk about. Let me grab a sip of coffee here. I want to talk about studying the Word. So this is going to be real, you know, boots on the ground. Oh, there's Miriam. She'll be coming in. All right. Um... There's different ways to study the Bible, real practical, okay? There's one of the ways you can do is do a topical study, right? Who's ever done a topical study? You get, you grab, you know, the old way, we would grab a Strong's Concordance. Now we got computers that just, you click and it searches all for you, right? Or your phone, Blue Letter Bible is a great one. But you look up a topic and, and then it, it actually will tell you all the scriptures where that word occurs. And so... If you want to research the Holy Spirit, or you want to research the love of God, or the judgment of God, or whatever it is, the subject that you're looking at, you can take all the Word and look at it on one subject. And it's really neat when you, you can be like in doubt of something. Have you ever done this, been in doubt of something? And then you looked in the Word, and you compiled that there was like 50 verses on it. And after you read it, you're like, that's so clear. Why, why, you know, my mind gets clouded, but the word clears it up, right? It, it, it literally purifies it. And so topical studies are really good, okay? And I encourage everybody to do topical studies, especially on a subject where your mind is not sure. Because a lot of times we remain in cloudiness because we haven't studied for ourselves. Do you guys see what I'm saying? Okay, I want to put a little caution there, though, because I believe there's a few ways we ought to study the Bible. Hello, sister. I'm so sorry. <laughs> That's all right. I'm trying to get everybody ready. I'm sorry. We're, 
recording this and you'll be able to go back and see what you missed. So. <laughs> All right. And we actually just started about talking about studying the scripture. So we just talked about topical study and how important that is and how that can clear up questions that we have on something sometimes very easily. And we're like, wow, that's just cut and dry. Um, another thing that I really believe is very important for studying scripture is, and I like what it says in Psalms 1, in his law he meditates day and night. And that's actually something really close to my heart because something that God placed in me and the Holy Spirit asked me to do years ago was that I would be in his word day and night. That I would read something in the morning. There's been times where it's like, oh, I'm late for work, but, you know, I got, I got to read at least a verse, you know, or whatever, or read at least a chapter because I don't want to go without that. And it's, it's become a commitment. And it's really easy, if it's not important to you, it's really easy to not do it because life is busy. It has to be important to you, right? And he spoke to my heart one day, and I had gone through a time of, of really, to be honest, backsliding, not solid. I went through some hard stuff in my life. And he was teaching me to walk again. He was reestablishing my foundation. And the Holy Spirit spoke to me and he said, Sean, I want you, I want you to, to read the word day and night and be in my word day and night so that you will be like a priest that tends the temple. You're the temple that I dwell in. And I want you to tend the temple day and night, just like there was a morning sacrifice and an evening sacrifice. And just like that lamp, was tended to morning and evening, and you have the morning and evening offerings, right? I really believe things are in the natural to show a spiritual truth. If you will do that, I will give you legs of iron to stand under you, and you won't be struggling anymore. And so I made that commitment. I'll, I'll be in the Word day and night. And one very important way to study the Word is to read through, okay? Now, I like to, because I don't like to just be in just one part of the book and not the other part of the book for a long time. Like some people's reading, they might do one or two or three or even four times through the Bible, whatever your pattern is, right? But let's say you're on a one year through the Bible. Well, it's going to be a year till you're, or a half a year, nine months till you hit the New Testament. But the New Covenant writings are really important, right? So... I like to start in Genesis and Matthew, and I do my morning, and I'll do, you know, my Old Testament reading, and then I'll do my New Testament reading, and I'll read through. And I, I read the Bible more than once a year, um, and there's been years where I've read the Bible a lot of times in a year. Man, when I was young, I just read the Bible all the time. But... Um, as I've gone through, it's given me a panoramic view. It's given me a solid knowledge of the Word of God. And I've actually seen people that have done only topical studies. And they, they're, the, they're the hit and miss readers, right? So I'm just going to flip open. I'm going to read here. And like, oh, yeah, they've read that book 20 times. And then they're like, what's Nahum? You know, or what's Obadiah? Or I've never been, you know, I've never read these other parts of the Bible, so you're actually out of balance. And, and see, the Bible interprets itself. And so one thing interprets another. And I actually have seen this. I believe it's dangerous to only topical study. And I just said it was very important, right? Right. But I've seen people that are experts in prophecy, and they're like, they, you're like, man, they can just quote chapter and verse, and they just seem like a, a whiz on it, right? And then... You take them outside of that one thing they really love to study, or those two or three things they really love to study, and you'll find that there's almost like a biblical illiterate, illiterateness going on. I don't know if you guys have ever seen that. And it's like, wow, I really pegged this person for knowing the word, but I see that there's an out of balance. And let me tell you why that's important, because when we take subjects of, of the scripture, they're interconnected. Okay, they're very interconnected, and if I only, there may be other subjects that input into that one subject you topically studied, but you're without that. And so now you have that out of balance, and you don't have the overview. You know, have you ever heard the saying, you can't see the forest 
Is it for the trees or for yeah, the, the trees? trees? I think. Huh? I think it is for the trees. For the yeah. trees. And that's meaning you see the trees right in front of you, but you can't see the whole forest because the trees right in front of you are blocking it. And so you lose sight of the whole picture. Like, I've seen people that study, I'll give you an example. I've seen people that study the love of God. And they topically study the love of God, and they've never read through the scripture enough to see the judgment of God. And so they actually believe that the love of God is this thing that excludes judgment. And so their understanding of the word can be very skewed, and then their, actually their doctrine gets off. Is there, oh, a God of love would never bring judgment, right? But as we read, you know, like Romans, I, I saw a guy the other day, someone recommended a video, and it was all about love, and he was like, there is no judgment coming. A God of love would never judge anybody. And I'm like, it, my Rolodex was going on, and it's like Romans 1, the wrath of God is revealed from heaven against all ungodliness and all unrighteousness of men. And the word began to go, and I'm thinking, now hold on a minute. And he says, God's never threatened judgment. This guy is a very well-articulated man, very good teacher, actually. And I'm thinking, and, and actually, I, as I listened to him, I had the thought that, you know, the way he presented it, it was very well done. And if I didn't have a foundation in the Word, I felt like I could see where someone would easily get off balance on that subject. Do you see what I'm saying? So, you know, Paul said, knowing the goodness and the severity of God. You know, you got to know His severity and His goodness. You got to know, and they're not contrary to each other, right? And so we can really get out of balance, whatever the subject is. Right? We can do that with prophecy, in times, different things like that. So having, I know this is really kind of slow moving here, but this is important stuff. Um, having an overview of Scripture and knowing how it all interlocks is the only way to really keep yourself from being deceived. You can read by subject and get deceived. But if you have a daily, you read from front and, and just read through Read through, and then when you read through, you read through again. So for over 30 years now, I've been reading through. More than once a year. I, I won't tell you how many times I've read through the Bible, but it's fairly significant. And I know it's the only thing that's kept me. And I've been, there's been times where, you know, Scripture can be kind of confusing sometimes. You ever, especially when you first start diving in and you're like, I don't get that, and there's things that confounded me, even after reading through quite a few times. But it's amazing as I keep going and keep going, and it just starts storing inside of me, all of a sudden he opens up more, and opens up more, and opens up more, so I can see and understand. So I hope that that point, without belaboring it anymore, is that we really need to have a good grasp of the overall word. Every single believer, it's my firm conviction that every single believer should be reading from front to back, whether you're you know, jumping and doing old and new at different times together, but have a program of a plan and go through the Word. It doesn't take as long as you think. Right. And when you get done going through that, then go through it again. Can you follow me with that camera, Donald? You might even just pick it up and point it at me. I don't know. Here. Got like batteries and cords and stuff involved with it. Oh, so. I know. <laughs> All right. So I don't have. I wish. I have some coffee grounds, so I'm just taking my time here. No pressure. So this is dirt. We'll just call this dirt. Okay. I'm gonna waste a little bit of coffee grounds. Precious coffee grounds. So that's what happens from living in the word world. I'm sorry. Living in the world, you get dirty. See that? And so, wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way? Right? And he says he's going to wash his bride with the washing of the water of the word. And so, I need the word of God. And it's cleansing. Now that you see what's going on, there's less and less dirt. And it's continually getting clean. Look, it's getting more and more clear. There's some stubborn ones down there. So now I end up with a clean 
glass of water that I could drink from. See that? So I might say, I'm good, I've read the Bible. But you know what? I'm still in the world. And the philosophies of men, and the deceit of men, and the cunning of men, whereby they lie in wait to deceive, continually is trying to pour into my brain, which is my cup. I need a continual flow. And in his word, I need to meditate all the days of my life. Right, Joshua 1 8 up there on the board. Yeah. Um, this book of the law shall you meditate in day and night, and then shall you make your way prosperous. Then shall you have good success. It's to be in every day of your life. And I can tell you, when you haven't been in the Word, you think you've got the Word in you. Oh, I, I've read it plenty of times. And if you stay out of the Word for a while, you find you're susceptible to the deceive, deceivings of men. I've seen it so many times, and I've, I've experienced it times where I didn't have that commitment going on, and I needed to repent because I actually became clouded in my thinking, and I can be deceived. So, all right. So, where is our, what's our time? Anybody got time? I want to keep track a little bit. 6.36. 6.36, okay. 2 Thessalonians chapter 2. I won't necessarily hit all these scriptures. Don't get scared, everybody. <laughs> You're there to choose from, I guess. Okay. Second Thessalonians 2. I, I think this is really important because it talks about the last days. And, of course, the last days started in the book of Acts when the Holy Spirit was poured out. Remember, I'll pour out my spirit in the last days. So we know the last days started, but not all things have come to completion yet. So... We're still in those days. And he says, well, that's first Thessalonians, hang on. Now we beseech you, brothers, by the coming of our Lord Yeshua the Messiah, and by our gathering together to him, that you be not soon shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit nor by word, nor by letter as if it was from us as that the day of Messiah is at hand, or that the coming of the Lord was at hand. He says, for that, let no man deceive you. And there's a lot of men that would deceive us. I, I want to tell you something. Um, as I look at like what internet is doing to us today in the church, and that a lot of people's feeding is internet teaching. Okay, and I post teachings on internet, so I'm not against that, but I would say that your, if your time of feeding is more listening to what other people have to say, and it outweighs your time in this book, I believe you're going to be deceived. I believe that you are imbalanced, and you're not loving the Word of God like you should love the Word of God, because... Every one of you should be able to let no man deceive you. Not because I need my pastor or my group leader and they'll protect me and help me know what I need to know. Paul says, let no man deceive you. you got to have it for your spirit. Remember the, the ten virgins and the five are wise and the five foolish? And the five, they said, give us of your oil. Give us of your Holy Spirit, your relationship, give us of your knowledge, give us of the word, whatever that you got. And they said, no, you have to get your own. So you got to get your own. Let no man deceive you. That phrase is repeated over and over again in the word of God. And how are we going to keep from being deceived? So as we read on, for that, that day, the coming of the Messiah, will not come except there come a falling away first, that means a, a departure from truth, and that the man of sin or lawlessness is revealed, the son of perdition. Who, and that's kind of a connection to the abomination of desolation, or that word per, perdition is connected to um, desolation or destruction. So he's the man of destruction, and there's come, um, and there's been types of it, of an abomination that makes desolate, right? And so... He says, "My coming won't. His coming won't come 
except there is first a revealing of that man of sin. And so that we're not caught under unawares. And it says this guy, this man of sin, is going to oppose and exalt himself above all that is called God, or that is worshipped, so that he, as God, sits in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. So this is a great deception that is talking about in the last days before the coming of Messiah. For the mystery of iniquity is already at work. Only now... He who holds back will continue to hold back until he is taken out of the way. That's not the Holy Spirit, by the way. Just Some people want to teach that. I really don't believe that. Um, and then shall that wicked one, or that wicked, be revealed. So there's a revealing of the man of sin, of, of the enemy working through man, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth and destroy with the brightness of his coming. So we know that this man of sin that arises before his coming is actually destroyed at his coming. See how the word connects? And so then we can, that, I mean, that really helps us in our end time understanding, right? Um, but I want to get to this really important part here. Even him whose coming is after the working of Satan with all power and signs and lying wonders. So, you know, within the church, who's he coming to deceive? Remember Yeshua said that he would deceive the very elect if it was possible? Don't you know that we're targets to be deceived? We're targets of the enemy. And he's going to come even with power and signs and lying wonders. And that's why when somebody tells me Hey, there's a revival going on over in so-and-so. And they've got miracles happening and signs and wonders happening. And there's gold dust coming down. I don't know if it's out of the air vents or out of heaven. <laughs> okay, or there's gemstones appearing. Um, and, and I'm not against signs and wonders. Don't get me wrong. I believe our God is a God of signs and wonders. But what I'm saying is i got to have discernment because... If they have the signs and wonders and power, and he says lying wonders, but they aren't preaching the truth. If they are, if that revival does not include um, radical transformation of the life to obedience and to holiness and walking with God, then I don't care what signs and wonders are going on. I wholly reject it as, as a counterfeit, as not a work of God, because I believe the greatest work of God is when he delivers a man from sin. And if a man is not getting delivered from his sin, you know, he could have gold dust on him, but what good does that do you if you're still a slave of sin? Amen. Is that God? And I'm not saying... Yay or nay, I don't know. It's beyond my knowledge if God puts gold dust on people. And I'm not taking a critical approach to this at all. I want to see the true fruits of righteousness with those signs and wonders. And how am I going to know? How am I going to know? Because I'm going to be in this day and night. And then, you know, the scripture says, be sober and watchful, be vigilant, for you know your adversary, the devil, walks about like a roaring lion, seeking whom he may devour. And I love that, because by saying he's looking for the ones he can devour, tells me that he knows he can't devour just anyone. There's only certain ones he may devour, and he's looking for the ones that he may devour, because there are those that are inedible by the enemy. Like Samson... The lion roars against you, and you're going to, the Spirit of God's going to come on you, and you're going to rend that devil like a kid of the goats. And out of your victory, there's going to be honey that laid in the carpet. Remember, Samson had a victory over a lion, and he returns back, and there's honey in it, and it was a source of, a source of his strength and his sustenance. That's amazing. And then. He slays a thousand men with the jawbone of an ass, right? You know what came out of that jawbone? Water. And he drank from it. That's, like, I don't think that's an accident. Have you ever seen that? Like, his substance, feeding his thirst in the natural and his hunger, was through his victories. Through what he destroyed and the object of his victory over the Philistines. 
And so you're you're not meant to be the tail, you're meant to be the head. You don't have to be devoured. When he says, let no man deceive you, you should know fully that the Spirit of God lives inside of you and know who you are. It doesn't matter if, if I'm slow to comprehension, um, he can teach me. He can open up my mind to the scriptures, right? In Luke 24, here 44 through 49, it says that it was when Yeshua, they were, he says, O fools and slow of heart to believe all that the prophets have said. Ought not Christ to have died and risen again? And he opened up their minds that they could understand the scriptures. Isn't that awesome? So you have a helper on board. You've got an interpreter that can teach you and guide you in the word. And I want to point out a few things here. Um, the Spirit and the Word. I want to talk, I know I don't have a lot of time, people, will, we're going to do some worship, but uh, the Spirit and the Word is so important that we have both in our lives. And, and I see it in the temple, because you have the menorah and the showbread. And the temple it is, is an example of how we approach God, right? So you come in to the outer court, and as you walk through the outer court, the first thing you have is the brazen altar, the place of sacrifice. And that lets us know that we don't approach God until we come through the sacrifice of Yeshua, that the blood that's been shed, not on our own merit, that we're, we're able to come because of that. And then there's the laver, where you can wash your hands and be clean. And the laver represents the Word of God and being cleansed by the Word, right? And then as you go on, you come to... You go into the, you're not in the Holy of Holies yet, but you're in the holy place. And you've got the menorah and the showbread. And I love this, that, you know how you've been, as you're going to the temple, you come to one article and then another article. But when you come to the lampstand and showbread, you come to them simultaneous. You have the bread on one side, and you got the illumination of the spirit of the lampstand on the other side. Because how are you going to eat bread unless the lamp is shining on the bread for you and illuminating the room. And so I love that, that in the temple, that Yeshua says, I am the bread of life, right? And he says, man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God, which is in Matthew 4, 4, Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3. And so I have the word, and that's what I'm to live by daily. We feed our bodies, why not feed our spirit? So I told you, this is a real nuts and bolts. This is the basics. But don't we all need to be remembered, reminded about it all the time? And so I go in, and I don't just eat the bread in the dark. That's not good, okay? I might eat the Spirit. And just like the apostles, you know, they knew the Word of God, but they needed Yeshua to open their understanding so that they could understand and see what was veiled from them. And I see it so important because I've known people, I wrote it up here, make, make some people mad at me. Um, charismatic error, you know, we got charismania out there. And I believe in the moving of the Holy Spirit and the gifts of the Holy Spirit, so don't get me wrong. But what I see out there is I see a lot of just running after the, the Spirit and experience and feeling and it's not very or very lightly connected to the word. And I see that as a, a, as a huge danger because we can be so easily deceived. And there's always a new thing that springs up that says, come check this out. And I want all that God has for me, right? I believe in the baptism of the Holy Spirit, the evidence of tongues, the, the gifts, the words of knowledge, words of prophecy, uh, healing. I believe all those things are, are of God, but I also believe the enemy comes in counterfeits, and so it's so important to have both. And then you've got other people that are your word only, and they will voraciously eat the word. And I've seen the people that, that can almost quote it all and be missing the basic doctrines of the faith by miles. And I think, how can you have all that knowledge and be and not even know who Yeshua is? 
right? The Pharisees and Sadducees, they had it memorized, some of them, the whole thing, the Tanakh. And they couldn't see Yeshua because only having the word. And then people say, well, God, does, the Holy Spirit's not here to speak to you. He doesn't guide you. Well, that's kind of sad because <laughs> I feel, kind of feel like I need him. I feel like I need to hear his voice. He says, my sheep hear my voice. And so it's so important that we do both. As someone said, it's not my own quote, but all, all spirit and no truth, and we blow up. I hope I get this right. All word, no spirit, we dry up. And word with the spirit, we grow up. Can you say that so I can write it? Yeah. Or post it on Facebook. It'll be in a video. <laughs> I'll get that posted probably next week. All, all spirit and no word. And you blow up. Okay, like a blow. Okay. Yeah. All word and no spirit and you dry up. The letter of the law kills, right? Um, and word and spirit and you grow up. So. Thanks. Yeah. See, all the quotable quotes I got from somewhere else. <laughs> I quote you. Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and so just a couple of things you know like there's so many counterfeits like you're if you study counterfeit dollar bills or hundred dollar bills or whatever they come out so often and so quick nowadays that it's impossible to study all the counterfeits you can't possibly even keep track of what the counterfeits are and what the problem with them is and so they've learned that the only possible way to ever be able to identify the counterfeit is to be an expert in the original. You have to know that hundred dollar bill, know every square millimeter of it and where everything's at and know it just exactly. And then you don't have to study all the errors. You right. just need to study the original and it, and it and identifies the counterfeit, right? There are pitfalls, kind of like Pilgrim's Progress, you know, walking, there's all these pitfalls. But his word is a lamp to my feet, a light to my path. We need the word of God. Love the word of God. Let's finish that Second Thessalonians 2 here. <clears throat> He's coming with all power, signs, and wonders. I'm not against power, signs, and wonders, but not when it's from Satan. I don't want that. And Satan's going to have that with all deceivableness of unrighteousness in those that perish. You know, and that's usually one of the, the clear markers when something's not of God, is righteousness isn't connected to it. You might have a move of God where there's, they're into lawlessness. Um, not do God. what you want. You know that's not a move of God, right? It's a quote-unquote move of God. So... Because, okay, it's, it's with all deception of unrighteousness, who's deceived? Listen to this. And those that perish, because they did not receive the love of the truth that they might be saved. And so, I could probably, I could keep going, but um, I just want, hopefully, like, even this little Bible study is not just to fill your head with knowledge, but if, I, if, if the Holy Spirit could inspire you to love the Word of God, inspire you that I want to be in the Word day and night, I want to be an inedible, and, 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 make, and make it important. Remember uh, Deuteronomy 8, 1 through 3, He humbled you and to teach you that man shall not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds out of the mouth of God. And so live on it, love it, Love the Word of God. You know what you'll be like? You'll be like a tree planted by the rivers of water who you're not worried in the time of drought. Your leaf won't wither and whatever you do will prosper and you're going to bear fruit and you're not going to have any fear. of. You know, we can when we don't know our Word and we don't have a prayer life, we ought to be in fear of deception. I mean, well, we shouldn't have any fear, but that's what, but we're going to get to see because we're not doing what we know to do. You could say, well, God will protect me um, 
But he's like, but I gave you something to do. I gave you instructions. You didn't do it, and then you didn't follow the path, and now you're complaining because you're lost, and you don't know where you're at. Right? right? What sense does that make? Right. So, love the Word. And then the next verse in 2 Thessalonians 2 there, it says that those that are deceived because they didn't receive the love of the truth, those that didn't receive the love of the truth, read it for yourself, that, that God will send them strong delusion. God himself... You say, oh, God would never do that. No, actually it says he would. It's the word. I can't argue with that. And you might say that's unjust, but I say, no, it's not unjust. Because he says, love my word. He says, live on it day and night. And if you scoff at that, he says, I'll scoff when your fear comes. Proverbs chapter 1. I will scoff when your fear and your destruction comes upon you. And even God himself may allow that deception to have take place in your life because you didn't receive the love of the truth. You weren't grounded and settled. And uh, so I don't want to end this on a bad note, right? <laughs> but I'm just saying we, that's not us, right? That's not us. We, we are well able to inherit the land. We're not worried about the, the cities walled up to heaven. We're not worried about the giants, right? We're well able because we have all things that pertain to life and godliness. Everything that we need. You know, it's not, none of us should be in, in despair and think, man, I don't know if I can make it. It seems so hard. <laughs> it's so easy and most people don't do it. It's so easy and most people don't do it. And then they are deceived. And then they are lost. Because you just need to do the simple. The basics. <laughs> you know what? I remember when you... It's so, so amazing. I'll close right now. Um, you know, when you first get born again, you know, and people are like, well, what do I do? I'll just read and pray. Read and pray. You know what? That is like some of the most amazing advice you ever got in your whole life. Read and pray. Well, that's too simple. <laughs> Give me... A, um, a thick book, give me a, a break it down scientifically for me. No, it's read and pray. Read and pray, and that's going to download everything else into you and learn to love the truth. So, anyway, thanks for uh, listening. All right. <laughs>